Straw Hut Media. We're better together with Anne and Heather. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Better Together. We are giggling already today because of the guest that is on the air with us, Mr. Derek Warburton, our friend and guru master. We are going to get deeper into the love that we share with this man. Heather, take it away. Today, we have Derek Warburton. He is a media entrepreneur, celebrity fashion stylist, philanthropist, and recently named editor-in-chief of British Thoughts magazine. Breaking news here is that he's on the verge of launching a new magazine, but I'll wait to let him give us the big reveal on that <laughs> one. Derek has a long history in media, fashion, and giving back to his community. He has commented on celebrity fashion and provided style advice during appearances on Extra, Dateline, Good Day New York, HuffPost Live, NBC, CBS, ABC, and Fox. He's even appeared on The Real Housewives of New York City. In 2020, he made his acting debut in the series The Salon, executive produced by Kelsey Grammer. And just recently, in 2021, he was in the feature film Sarah Ghetto with Eric Roberts. Derek is a style ambassador to too many brands and charities to name, but worth singling out is that he was honored with the style ambassadorship to the city of Los Angeles by the California State Assembly for his work with the homeless. We first met Derek when Ann did the cover of his magazine, Mr. Warburton. The truth is that we have been inseparable <laughs> ever since. And if anybody's ever listened to our podcast, they know who Derek Warburton is because we talk about him all the time. So you might as well meet him here today. Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome, Thank you. Welcome, it's such an honor friend. to be here. It's such an honor to be here. And you know I demanded the wine because well, I, can't, I can't do Girls' Day without wine. Let, for us, sure. let, us, let us begin with a cheers. And when yes. I listen to that, Derek, I just want to say it, it's, it says to me you're a renaissance man. I mean, uh, this, when you hear about a human being who has done so much, committed so much to themselves, committed so much to the arts, committed so much to other people's arts, and came from where you came from, I think we would, first of all, like to say congratulations. Thank you, oh my God, I <laughs> On being cry. awesome. On being awesome. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and I, I And I know that you, your, your dedication and passion, not only with the homeless, but also in the support of, of, of so many other organizations that help people. Where did that come from? My own life, Yeah. to be honest. Yes. You know, uh, you and I, I think, have really connected because of our childhoods and how difficult it was. And you looked at me. I had that Peter Pizzoli incident. Oh, oh my, my God, gosh. Peter okay, God. first of all, girl. Drink. Girl, <laughs> bye. I know. Rich today. bitch problems. Drink. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, oh, right. Oh, that's right. I didn't right. think that's she right. was going to bring up Pizzoli. Okay, let's <laughs> drink. Course. I really, I was going to say it, Derek, and then I was, I mean. I, oh, I, I, no. Oh. I also thought with Derek, she, he won't. She, well, I had my tragedy. I had my tragedy. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I have a philosophy on life, actually. And that this is the perfect time to come in and make you feel better about yourself because that's what I do <laughs> yes, for people. Please, uh, yes, please. I think that in a huge part of my story, and I think a lot, a lot of your story is that some of us suffer a lot in the beginning. Some of us suffer a lot at the end and some of us suffer a little bit every single day. That's why I never judge anyone's pain, including your Peter Pizzoli pain. Oh my God, because... don't say that again. I'm gonna be <laughs> oh, yeah, before I ask oh, well, my second well, question. That, well, I did show up, so that's exactly what's gonna happen. Watch out guys, I ain't gonna get loopy today. <laughs> but I think it's really important for the human condition that we all really realize that all of us go through the same things. It's just at different times in our lives and in different ways. You know, I suffered a lot in the beginning, you suffered a lot in the beginning, but then, you get through it, and if you work through it, which hope I pray for people they can, I know I have, and then the rest of your life can be joy and love and light, and you're able to do for others that, you know, people did for me. You know, when I was a kid, uh, I was in this forest fire, even when I was homeless, so you can imagine, that's a double whammy. Well, Running we for my hope, life. I mean, there, right, I there are things that I want to, I want to let the audience know here. There is some, we are gonna talk about some really tough stuff today. 
And, and, and because it is a celebration of where you come from and what we like to do on Better Together, support people telling the truth of their stories so that we can help people be okay with sharing theirs. So when you hear something in a sentence like this, something that I've learned in my life, you say, well, when I was homeless and then I was in a forest fire and then in, in the stories, I just want to give people a moment to go, let's hear your story. Yeah. Um, and, but you're, we're going to get a moment to have to relax with it because it's some tough stuff. And we're talking about your tough stuff so that other people feel the freedom to get on the side of joy that you're on and speaking about. And that's, yeah. that's one of the main reasons we started this show that's was that so that we could talk about things like this. Like you look at Derek and he's fabulous. Mr. He fabulous. is actually Derek fabulous, right? right? And has created this incredible life for himself, but it wasn't easy to get there and, and, you know, you you could not talk about that and no, not let other people know. And, and, and the fact that you were so open yes. with where you came from and how you got here, I think is really an inspiration to anybody listening yes. that's going through something or thinks, how can I get to this place? How can I get to the joy? You, yeah. you're talked to, you just spoke about me. Yes, I suffer. Yes, I did when I was a kid, but I do feel like I am a little bit every so, day. So if tell us your story. The only you, way, when, yes. the only way to find pure love, pure, humanity, pure selflessness. And so, and, and also, you know, sometimes I'm selfish and you have, you have to be selfish and selfish is not a bad word. People use it in a derogatory sense, but selfish honey is sometimes the only way to win. Well, you know? I'm going to put a pin well, in that because he says selfish, but he did arrive today with gifts for both of us, <laughs> which I am, I am wearing if anybody can see oh because my it's gosh, so beautiful. So but funny. I do want to say when you, when you talk about being selfish, I, I, I would say that you are the, probably the number one person who balances out that uh, selfish <laughs> with the, with selfless. Well, I think that the reason he, you say that too, is that I think it's really important. It's almost like the, you know, that analogy when you're in an airplane and you put the air mask on to save yourself so that you can yes. save others. No, if you don't take care care of yourself exactly. you can't give back you know it's about self-care and you know like the, but that's why i don't think being selfish is a bad word yes. so many people think of Correct. it that way but if you don't love yourself enough to love others you never can and that was well, something that i really concentrated on you know it's like you know we've talked about this in the past and for people that don't know me I, you know i was in a very terrible situation with my biological mother at 10 years old my parents get a divorce and she met a partner that was very abusive and it was tough for a long time. And then that oh, came a female home. partner. A, a female woman. partner. Yeah. yeah, she met a woman. And um and it was just it was really abusive and really difficult. And you know, at 15 years old, I was faced with suicide. Yeah. Or choose me. And I chose me. And I've always chose me. Because no one else would at that time. <laughs> yes, I understand. You know, that. and you know that you know that very well. But that and takes so much self awareness. How do you feel like you found that at fifteen and understanding that your choice was either I'm going to do this for myself or nobody, nobody. Because nobody I, else will. because I, funny enough, which is how my career happened. I lived in a fantasy world. Because that was my escape, you know. And I, I've done so much work with gay youth and and youth at risk. And I tell them all the same thing. Create a world for yourself. Yes. And then go get it. And I did that. And I wow. stayed alive so I could be me. Now. Wow. And I love myself enough to say that. And because you had the purpose and the destination, another thing that we like to talk about is being able to have that intent in your life. And look at the thing that you're going for. Um, I think a lot of children who live in in a, uh, an abusive environment, and, and what I mean by that is a place where you are mistreated, where things are going in that feel bad to you. Okay, yes. so it's not, we all have different, there are all different ways that things feel bad when you're a kid. But, and everybody has their own release plan. And often it's a separation or delineation of another entity, whether it's your own identity or a purpose and a place that you see yourself going. And I want to encourage that in, in those that may be feeling, whether they're, they're adults or kids right now, to say, For I sure. wait, I can survive if I create a place that I know I can get to. And when I listen to things that encourage me to know that I can get on the other side, I'm doing better than you and I were, Derek. We, we didn't know. There wasn't somebody right. on the other side going, right. you're going to make it. But we are those people. 
who say you know what is the other funny? Side, they a, can make it. a way that I saved an enormous amount of money in my life. This is it's kind of a quirky story, but I would go to therapy. They're like, you need to be in therapy. Well, I'd go to therapy <laughs> and they would say to me, OK, tell me all your problems. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh, well, well, first of all, I don't have that much. We can't afford that, um, you know, because this is going to be an endless story. But, you know, they were like, well, how do you deal with your problems? And I said, I put everything in a box mm. mentally, because when we're faced with all these issues at one time, that's overwhelming. You can't deal with them. You know what that is? Scheduling your worry, exactly. Dr. E. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> that see, is, that, that is exactly. a doctor you scheduling Dr. your worry. E, schedule your worry. And so I can't do everything at once. None of us can. And I've been able to build my life off of situations where I was like, that can't happen right now because I'm in the middle of this. And then when yeah. you have the time or the wherewithal of the capacity, because sorry, I mean, living everyday life anywhere, it takes a lot of me mental capacity, yes. as we know, just getting by, especially now. And so you have to be able to put things aside and then you open that door when it's time. And you know, a lot of the things in my own life, I will say to myself, hey, this is a fact about you. How do you wanna move forward with that fact? Wow. You know, and because we all have things about ourselves that we wanna change. You know, I've had major weight things my whole life about food and just like a bad relationship with food and bad relationship with my weight and which, which created self-consciousness. Yes. And so I had to ask myself, why are you here? What happened to you that this made you became this way where you're so strong and you know you're a beautiful man. You know it. So where what is this? Yeah, where's the gap? And you have to be able to say that to yourself, which so many people don't have the self-awareness. And that's why I tell everyone to look in the mirror every single morning and say to themselves, I love you for who you are. Well, that's a takeaway right here on Better Together, really, isn't it? Let's well, there's your the clip, mirror, honey. Say, I'm done. All right, mic drop. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's but, such an honor. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think that part of the lack of encouragement for somebody to be able to have that kind of strength, the, the, the darker, the deeper that the wounds go, it's there's so much garbage in the way there's so much that they don't want there that it's very difficult to see the other side of yes. it. And so what we, what, what, why, and I'm going to keep asking you about your story. The reason we tell stories to get it out of our system. We have in, in telling our story, we understand it's not ours. It's the story that we were born into. That's that last name story. And the darker it gets, the more difficult it is to shine light on. And so what we like to encourage is tell the truth about the facts of your life. Say it to yourself, hopefully a friend, if you're lucky enough to have Heather in your life, where you can go, this is the darkest I get. This is what happened to me. And I'm looking to get on the other side. And with the encouragement, you can. But I think that the first steps is really in whether you're writing it, telling it, showing it, telling it getting it out of you I allows agree. you to be able to look more clearly at yourself and who you are, which is when we begin the first name story. But but I wanna go back to when you were 15. Can we go back to that when we come back after a break? So I've been trying to cut down on carbs, sugar, and junk food and realized I basically can't eat anything anymore. And sometimes I'm just really craving something sweet. Magic Spoon is a perfect fix that feels like it's cheating, but it isn't. It has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Plus, there are only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. It really has it all. And if you and your partner have different opinions on cereal flavors, don't worry. Magic Spoon's Variety Pack comes with four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. All of the flavors from your childhood, but it's super nutritious. I just had the cocoa flavor this morning, and it is the perfect way to start my day. But you can always have a bowl in the afternoon, too, when you need a little pick-me-up. To get your hands on a variety pack of Magic Spoon, just go to magicspoon.com slash better. If you use the special promo code better while checking out, you can save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. 
I have a feeling you won't need a refund, though. Trust me, my pantry is fully stocked with Magic Spoon at all times. It's so good. It's not stocked now because I stole it. <laughs> Had her stole it. <laughs> Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash better and use the code better to save $5 off. <laughs> And we're back. I think we. <laughs> that was well, a very are. light comeback after well, all of this. Whatever. <laughs> we're back. Sorry. We're here. Uh, we're we're talking uh, with uh, Derek Warburton. Mr. Derek Warburton. And, and and we kind of want to hear the story about the struggles that he went through in his life and how that brought him to where he is now and how that brought him to have yeah. such a strong sense of social responsibility as well as being Derek Fabulous. Yeah. So, so it was kind of around 15 where you was was that the catalyst? Yeah, it was, it was a little younger. Uh, we I was with my biological mother who I, I just want to preface this. I have nothing but respect for because she did the best she could. I'm not angry at all, as a matter of fact. And well, I that's have a part a lot of your of journey that you all, you've shared, yeah, I have which a lot of I think a lot of people would like to know Did you and feel understand. that when you were 15? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. I felt differently, but yes. that's okay. I was also a child. That's yeah. exactly you know? right. And, and this also, is, this is and, I will admit, and I will admit, uh, I was in survival mode. Yes. yes. Because it was, you know, I, we're, I'm living in the woods. There's yeah. no sewer. I'm digging it. Where where were you in in, in Florida? In the world. Okay. Yeah. In uh, Pearson, the uh, firm capital of America. Oh. Mm -hmm. my, firm? My so a little firm? gay, a little Is gay in boy in the firm capital of America. You <laughs> know that went well. I like, uh, I like a firm. <laughs> Can you wipe your ass with At burns? that time, at that time, <laughs> in the early '90s, you know, in the early '90s. Um, no, and it was just. It, I think what made it difficult was because there was just nothing I could do, and then I was lying. To my biological, but to my dad. So, and so my you were so you 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 were living with your mother when your mom and dad separated, and your yes. dad went and he remarried. Is that correct? Yes. So, Who is my mom? I mom. love her. Yes, I'm very tight with her. But there were your two biggest fan, as a matter of fact. Oh, remember good. at Christmas oh, we you. talked to her. Yes, I know. Yes. Believe me, what are you talking about? In the middle about? of the night, I got drunk. The best <laughs> snack I've ever gotten in my life. Yes, when you that brought is true. The, that I is mean, true. it was like. Caramel corn and 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 all like yes, it like, was fabulous. It was fabulous. It's a, As it's we a move, mix up. It's a white trash mix up, is what it's called. And yes. we've got the best snacks ever. Did I but, eat that? Yes, no, it yes, was amazing. You, no, yes, you won't you remember. Did. It's yes. like graham crackers and yumminess. Yeah, oh, really it's divine. coming back yeah. to me yeah. a little bit. Yes. My mom is a, an amazing so, snack maker. But, but so you but, kept from yes. your father and mother. So a my bit. father and my stepmom had no 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 one in my family had a clue. At that all. your living situation no, was as bad as no, it was. Not, and why, no, why, why did you keep that from uh, Because it was just how they operated. You know, I can't say, you know, what their mindset was. And I think it was just a lot of tug of war between my biological mother and my father. And I was very much a possession. Mm -hmm. And it was the, no, you'll never get him kind of situation. And this went on from 10 to 15, really. Well, and let's be honest about abuse. I mean, one of the things, one of its tenets is that you hide it. And yes. a parent yes. or a, a caretaker or a, whoever it is, Whoever it is that is doing the wrong to a child, their yeah. main goal is to keep it private, yes. secret, and threatening if you reveal it. So, and I, yes. so and we are very intimidated yes. as abused children to yeah. say of or course. speak well, a word to anybody, in fear. let well, alone our own father. Well, I think that you've talked about this a lot, is that for whatever reason, because it shouldn't be, because it's not your fault, there's an element of shame well, that goes along with abuse. You do think it's your abuse. fault because you cannot imagine that a world says that you're being loved, but you're being so mistreated. So the world doesn't make any sense to you, which is why people escape themselves yes. to try to make sense of why something is being told, but the actions upon it are so delivering the opposite message. And also I'm being physically harmed. So in a lot of circumstances, yeah. but whether it's mental or physical, it doesn't yeah. matter what yeah. goes in that feels bad. And, but the but the isolation of it and the threat yes. of it is is very much the part of the system the of isolation abuse. Isolation is very real, you know. And yes. I was not physically abused at that point. There were there were other instances in the past before that, uh, but in that case, it was just I was 
not That's treated. That's why I say mistreatment. I yeah, I it's a mistreatment. Treated. It's something that goes into you that feels bad. Because if we had the choice and we think about our empowerment, we certainly wouldn't let something in that feels bad. But because we're children, we're vulnerable and we don't know another right. option. Yes, We for think sure. that this is the life that is, but it doesn't make any sense because when we look at other kids, that's not exactly the way they're feeling or thinking. They don't look like us. They're not hiding. Right. So we have to hide because we don't feel familiar. And exactly. that creates more exactly. isolation. So, so w- as far as the fire is concerned, we had been homeless for months and months already. And okay, so where were you pa- living? I'm sorry it, to it, ask no, for we specifics. Are, so we are. Uh, I was in Florida at in the, the time woods. in the woods. Did you go to a cabin? I went to no. It was just you were tense. just kind of tense. tense. And, and it was tense. You were. It was. It was the camping. real deal. Yeah, camping. we were basically camping. Yes. Camping. No and then toilets. There was no, no. I dug it. You yep. know, and yep. it was like, and there was no nothing. Yep. There was nothing, no, yep. no electric, Zero nothing. Yeah, it was like water and flashlights. Where you did know? you shower? We didn't. Wow. Just it was yep. just you know yep. washcloths and try to figure and, out the you know, rainwater, and, huh? And basically, yep. you know, or like yeah. they would go somewhere to a camping you, ground or camping or, site or, and fill water jugs and whatever. Yeah. But but anyway, so uh, within all of this, there's a fire, and I'm there alone, and oh her partner was burning trash, and. Yeah. It just, the wind yep. came, you know, it was oh an accident. God. It wasn't oh, yeah. anything, but of course I was blamed when everyone came wow, back. And of, of course, course there's nothing left, you know, and it was, I was, um, it was a tough situation. Oh. Everything I had was gone. And so, and, and by your, by having some, and I, and I know where you come, but, but I mean, because when you, when you're saying nothing, the things that you have are the things that are things that maybe you found on a school playground. Like you have a thing that's like a, a, a spin top yeah, there was or something nothing left. and you nothing. found it and then you, you're, you're keeping it, trying to keep something, anything yeah. that's yours. Yeah. But yeah. that's melted and gone too. Exactly. It's not as if there were plenty, there, it's yeah. a plentiful place. Right, it's, right, right. it's anything you care about. Yeah. And so. You know, when, when all of this happened and everyone came back, of course I'm blamed for it. And then there was a program that came that brought clothes oh. and then defended me. Oh. It was from the fire department and they defended me and they were like, no, 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 you burned trash. That was you, oh not my God. him. And of course I was just, Thank you. It, thank you, but also, but also really concerned, I would imagine. Time. Because like, was that horrible she bitch do? when they came? Well, like, oh, yes. And she's like, oh, yes. like, oh, like yes, what yes, on yes, earth yes, is yes. he going to do? Well, I, wasn't, yeah. I was talking about the partner. I wasn't talking about your no, mother. That's yeah, what no, I mean. No, no. Like, yeah. no, and I will say with my mother, and I never want to say that she was abusive. She allowed it. That's yeah. right. She it, was the witness. there. And that's just as bad. Sorry. I speak about that a lot in comic You don't choose someone over your own child that's you just correct. don't and she did and i but that but that's what made the break easier because when i left i i have not seen her since that day is she still with your mother no as a matter of fact that's another very long story okay. that is, is going to go in a book that i'm going to write next year actually. hell yeah yep, because yep. it was so, it's so involved and so mentally deep that but oddly the deeper you go in abuse the higher you rise, right? Because your greatness can come from this because when you decide it's done, honey, it's done for real and you're done. And you're gonna go, you know? And it's just my lot in life and what I try to do, telling stories as a storyteller, whether, however I'm telling them, you know, whether through my magazines or through community service or however else I can get the word out, it's so important to make decisions to go. You know, when I left this situation at 15, I forgave her at 25. Yeah. But I was like, and she was trying to get back in and pull all the same stunts. And I was like, oh, honey, it didn't work at 15. It will not work at 25. Well, I, where did you bless, go? Bless you. Goodbye. I went back to my father. And what happened? Can you can you talk to us about yeah, what, what, it was, what that interaction you was? You know, it's funny because my father is a really difficult guy. But at his heart, the best guy. Mm-hmm. And frankly, he saved my life. Because wow. he allowed me to come home. And my entire family was there. And I'll never forget it. So no matter how difficult he is or social stuff or whatever he is, he's I always, always will say that he saved my life. Do you and remember really the conversation that. that you had with him before you arrived? I, sh- I sure did. I was... Uh, I had gone home for vacation and had the best time. 
And you have to understand at the time, school was my savior. Yeah. Because I had somewhere to go. Yes. And I thrived. I was a straight A student. I was really good at school. I was singing. I was doing all different things. I was actually in the ROTC, believe it or not. Very funny. <laughs> uh, oh, no. I had to wear a uniform every single day. You probably I loved wore that. Oh, my God. No, I did not. No, because we had a fashion program at the school and I wasn't allowed because no. I had to be in the military. Did you make little oh. sequins on your Oh, oh I sure did, darling, sure did. <laughs> no, uh, I wore sequin underwear. No, I was just kidding. Uh, so I, um, you know, I remember going on vacation and then coming back and when I get off the plane, it's her partner there waiting for me with her partner's parents who I had a mixed relationship with. And I couldn't get off the plane. I was bawling. Wait a minute. I don't understand this timeline. You were getting off a plane to go. So I had gone on vacation back home to see my father. To see your father. And then you came back. And then the abusive woman that your mother was involved with met you coming off the plane. Yes. That must have been a monster you didn't want to confront. Wow. It was such a moment for me. And I cried all the way home. And then I went to my dear friend's house down the street and I called my father and I said, you get me out of here within a day or I'm going to commit suicide. Wow. And then what did I, you do? I ended up home. He's like done. And I went home. He called my mother. I went to bed and I didn't get out of bed until for three days until I got on that plane. And I have not seen her since that day. Wow. And she said to me getting on the plane, I'll never forget this. Uh, and this is a good segue to your commercial break. <laughs> yes. Uh, she said to me, are you going to say goodbye to her? And I said, like hell. And I got on oh. the plane and boom, that it closed and it was done. It was I would like, like a for you to say goodbye to her life. right now. Well, is that why wow. you're, you're famous? I would, but the thing that you say the most that is stuck with me is... Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Yeah. Exactly. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. bye. So, so what? This is what I have to say to you. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. When we come back, we'll Woo! talk about the future. <laughs> My draw. Uh-huh. Girl, girl, bye. You all know Heather is crazy about skincare. Some of her home remedies have been a bit strange. For example, want to share? Strange? You think it's strange to put 10 different products on your face before you go to bed? That it takes me an hour and a half to put on all of my stuff before I go to bed? That I rub needles on my face? Exactly, none of that works. But you do know what actually works? Prescription treatments. That's why we're excited to partner with Apostrophe. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. Apostrophe connects you with a board-certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. Apostrophe treats acne, and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals, like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. Heather will love this. Heather, what are some of your skincare goals? All the things you just said. That's why we have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with a board-certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash better when you use our code better. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash better and click begin visit, then use our code better at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's apostrophe.com slash better and use that code better to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. And we're back basically. We're back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no. one of the things that I think is really important for our listeners to take away from, from your story, there's so many things, but the one that jumps out to me is, is your story of forgiveness. And that, it, and that for all of those people out there right now that are going through something, that, that it takes a long time. I, it wasn't on this level, but when I was pregnant with my daughter, my parents divorced. My father left my mother. They'd been together since they were 15 years old. They, um, my mother was devastated and that was the hardest part of it all. As it is. But I did not forgive my father. It took me 
10 years to forgive my father. And the only way I was able to forgive my father was that when I started to realize that I was in a horrible marriage, I shouldn't say horrible marriage, in, 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 in a marriage yeah, that didn't a feel good. A tough marriage that right. didn't feel right at the right. time, yeah. yeah. And I was thinking about if I could find a way out. I was thinking, you know what? I don't love my kids any less for that. You know, that's correct. Right. And, that, and when I had, when that dawned on me, yeah, I was like, uh, but, but anyways, the point of me telling that story is that there's probably a lot of people out there that have uh, something going on with friends or family members that they've been hurt. And when you're hurt or abused or it takes a while, but when you get to that point and it might not be now, it might not be in five years, it might not be in 10, but when it comes and you finally give that forgiveness, remember that forgiveness is, is about you. Almost that's more right. than it is about them. Well, because that's exactly right. You know, at 25, when I forgave her, I forgave her for me. Right. Had nothing to do with her. She didn't deserve it. Right. I deserved it. Right. And that was the point. Yes, and you know, and I, what and that's I, what I want what people I want to, to remember. To everyone, right. Exactly. To your point, I want everyone to know that forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness yes. is about you. And forgiveness is about really being selfless to the universe. Yes. And I, I really believe that. And you know, and forgiveness does not, it, it doesn't have to come with consequences because forgiveness could also be goodbye. Yes. And I'm not afraid of a goodbye. Yes. Let me tell you what, you know, like what, during COVID, there were people in my life that I love dearly with all my heart and still do, but they were doing me zero service. Girl, bye. Girl, Girl bye. bye. Sorry. Well, I, want, I want to continue the, well, I want, one, I want to continue the conversation into the service that you've given because I think it's very important. But, I, but there was a, 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 a man named Frank Paris who, who is um, a connection uh, to uh, Derek and our very dear friend Robin, um, uh, said something to me that was extraordinarily important about forgiveness. And the question that I was asked was, do you forgive yourself? I was like, wow, forgiveness has been one of my most complicated words. Really? Why? Because do you forgive your mom? Do you forgive your dad? Yes. Like I yes. grew up in a, yes. I struggled with that word almost more than I'm not sure that you have it. forgiven. No, I don't think so either, but can I, can no, I make no, a point to but, you? But, I, but here, but to, to, to this, I, I want to talk about what happens after you leave an abusive situation, which I did when I was 17, but, but a lifetime of, a, of right. an abusive situation. My behavior and my action was still propelled by the abuse. So I lived with it, with its consequences, blaming myself for not being normal. I didn't understand anybody. I didn't know how to talk to anybody. We were poor. Yeah. I was abused. I was going to die of AIDS. I, I mean, it just went on and on. But once I left the situation, uh, uh, this beautiful man put in check with me that from that moment on, I had a chance to make choices and my growth and my healing and my maturity led me to my own experience of my own self and the mistakes I had made trying to figure out how to handle once you get out and I'd love yeah. your experience yeah. of this Derek yeah. because once you get out you're still handling all that got put in of course. and that's why I say you don't get to take one cup of insanity out, one, two are put in. You've got to bring them out. Right. You have to bring them to clarity. People talk about me standing up for, but why did I do what I did? Because the insanity of non-truth has to equal truth when it comes out right. and it had to be as big yeah, a platform right. as what got put in. And forgiving myself for the difficulties I had getting through the forgiveness for my family, getting to the place on the other side and really releasing myself from making wrong decisions along the way was important. I have one thing to say to that. Um, you would not be the extraordinary Anne Heche if you had not lived that life. So forgiveness is crucial. crucial. You have to forgive. To and realize that's what we want to tell our that audience. you that you, <laughs> you must would not yourself. be you would not be the amazing Anne Heche. and I'm sorry to me you are an icon to me 
You've, you move the needle in your t- lifetime. You've moved the needle. And you have to realize that and realize all the joy and all the freedoms that you brought to so many, whether you were given that credit or not, <laughs> which funny enough, when you come on, when, when, you know, when we when we work on the other side of the yes, thing and you, yes, you're, yes. You're, you work with me on something that will tell that story. But I, I think it's really important yeah. that you, you realize that the joy you have and the joy you've brought for others all comes from that really difficult place because you might not be as brilliant if you grew up like a Heather, you know what I mean? <laughs> I but don't know, hold that on. Was kind of yeah, but one. hold on. No, but Heather, no. but Heather, but Heather. Don't forget about that Peter Pizzoli trauma in no, the eighth no, grade. You have to see. Wait, wait, wait. No, but I haven't turned to Heather yet. But, well, I said Peter Pizzoli. But, now you're oh my God. No, no, no. Done. Oh, that's not a problem. Right. If you're well, coming to the party scream. late, every time I say the word, now it's no, going to be three Pizzoli, times. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to drink. It's a drink. No, but 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 then Heather found her greatness. Through other things, we all well, okay. find our greatness well, through different situations. Uh, it's just yours was difficult, mine was difficult. I actually had difficult shit growing up. I made, of I made, you well, did. not growing up. We all did, but again, I actually didn't growing up. I had an idealic no, 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 life growing up, other than but, the Peter Pizzoli. Oh my gosh. But no, 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 as a grown no, person, again, I went through my but steps. Again, oh, you gotta drink again. Again, what, the, like in the beginning of the podcast, when I said, some of us suffer a lot in the Look, beginning. I was going to say this some is of a us false at the end. Yeah. So, girl, you might have some good times to be had. No, <laughs> here's no. Here's one you of the things I'm going to be. No, of course, I don't want you to suffer. I don't want you to suffer at all because you are one of my. F- both of you are just. First of all, I think she's had her share of suffering. I'll just yeah. say that. We all have. We I mean, all we're, have. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're good on that one. Yeah, I think I'm um, good. But but I'm just going to put a pin in it because then I want to get to Derek Warburton, and Derek the Fabulous, and I, and I really do. But this was a, this is a really funny thing when people talk about where we come from, and I, and I want to say this story. You know. You and I, like, I can, like, oh, oh my God, the stuff I can list, the stuff you can list, you know, and then everybody else goes, well, mine isn't that bad. I remember when I was in high school, I was so afraid in ninth grade, my my brother and my father had just died. To, and and that's a mighty thing to say, yes. right? So I didn't say anything. Yes. Not to mention I was getting a full scholarship to the school and I just shut the heck up. But... I remember one day in 10th grade, I revealed to one of my, the very wealthy girls that I had met in school that my brother had died. I had waited a year and a half to like tell anybody that that's what just had happened to me. And she looked at me and she goes, damn, I wish my brother had just died. I can't get sympathy for anything. And I was like, Marcy, like, (laughs) <laughs> what? This was the strangest. It was the strangest understanding of how different people go through life. She went through life thinking, "Well, if I could just that's a horrible say, thing to say, though." Right, actually, well, well, by the way, it changed my life. By the I've way, obviously, never yeah, forgotten. Yeah. It. Don't like, be a dick. Wait, what? <laughs> I was like, Talk well, about don't be a like, dick. Like I just what a revealed bitch. to a person for the first time in my life because I was so quiet. Of course, my whole life was in shame and secrecy. So, right. admitting that and then her going, "Well, I wish I did." I was like, "These are two very different worlds that people come from. We all come from different places." I am not the Queen of Jesus. England. God knows, unless her brother but, was Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 it's a then what we want to what we want to talk about is the understanding <laughs> and compassion that we have. Heather is now having her ADD moment. I no, was I'm like, not. Wow, we're talking Heather, about something serious, Heather, and let, she's let, giggling. Oh well, I'm, I I'm, I'm laughing why. at my own jokes, and well, if anybody knows me, yeah, but I literally uh, laugh. I, I go know, home I know, at the end of the night you're and stoned. will be in bed by myself and well, laugh for hours. I know that, but you I believe it. I believe it. But I laugh at my own jokes. But that was a funny joke that but, I just laid. I looked at Robin out of the corner of okay, my eye and he's laughing. Okay, but you're at somebody that nobody on our podcast sees or hears. Oh, okay. and you're having our friend oh, Robin over there. I know. Hi, Robin. We love you. And by the way, Robin, you better come and say hi because if you don't, I'm going to kick your ass. Get over here. <laughs> yes. This is one of our best friends in the entire world. This is Robin. We call her bo- uh, boy, Robin. boy Robin. Boy Robin. Because he, they have another say best hi, friend boy, called Robin. Robin. <laughs> so this is Robin. This is who Heather is making jokes with while Derek and I are throwing our hearts on the table for people to oh understand our difficult lives. Oh, I'm kidding. This is, this is the friendship. Oh, I know. This is, the I know. Oh, my this God. is how it's, we it's can heal. Bomb. We heal with friends. Ryan, get over the here and show bomb. your face. Get over here and show yeah, your face. Yeah, but you know what? You know what? This is how we heal. Uh, this is how we do uh, it. 
This all is right. how we get to the good side. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Everybody. Everybody. Peter Pizzoli. Peter Pizzoli. <laughs> Okay, and now I'm thinking. Somebody's because gonna tell him. Otherwise, we don't back. want. Listen, now we're back. There is one person that earns the right to be called crazy, and it's me because I need my book that. But Heather, you're looking off to the side. I just needed to make sure that everybody understood you were talking <laughs> oh, to somebody that was real. Thank okay. you. I'm so, always looking now, <laughs> now we're going to get. I, I think we should get to the extraordinary moment where we met. Derek and I met with Heather when we were going to do the cover of your magazine, Mr. Warburton. And I have I'd a like correction to, talk about to how that. How you got there? I have a correction no, I to that. A, I, I know. I met you at a <laughs> restaurant before that, and Peter yes. Bacinelli, who I'm coming out with a movie with. By the way, 13 minutes, everybody. By the way, the yeah, we'll have to do that at the end because that's yes. coming out we do, tomorrow. We do. It's yes. coming out tomorrow, and it's very exciting. But uh, but and, and Peter was the was the was the uh, yes. adventure man Our that brought friend. me to you. Yes, he's been but, on your show. But, um, he has. Um, yes, but the but the place that I want to come into is when we met. Now we've heard the story of Derek. And, and yeah, I mean, we've heard a little bit in his, we, we, you know, all of our stories are very complicated, but we get to the moment right now where you are now Derek Warburton. I meet you, we do a magazine cover. Mr. Warburton. Mr. Warburton. And that's where we'll all become friends. Check but it out online. I'd like it's to know beautiful. a little bit of how you get, got there. What happened? You came to, you. we've heard about you going from 15, now well, you've experienced your life fuller, and I'll probably take you a decade later. How do we how do we meet Derek Warburton, who has his own magazine in Los Angeles, and you're putting me on the cover now three years ago? Well, how does that happen? Wow. Well, uh, trial and error. <laughs> I decided very young that I was going to be an entrepreneur. Okay. Which gives you the time, because when the rest of the people what, what so many people, not the rest of the people, so many people feel like they're stuck in a nine to five. I learned very quickly that was never gonna work because yeah. dreams are not gonna come through working nine to five. Mm. It just was never gonna working happen for me. To five. For me, what? you know, and for some people, some people, they have other dreams. My dream yes. was not to work for someone else, yeah. you know, and so, my dream was to be able to sleep in. So my dream well, now you, you is to be a kept that, woman, but I don't I know, know if that's weird. I mean, that's my dream too, darling. <laughs> I mean, I'm just putting it out there. I'm like, we all no. want to be kept ladies. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my God, I'd be out there saving the world even more than I try to now. Uh, <laughs> no, I, oddly, uh, I own multiple businesses. I traveled the world. I had done so many things, but funny enough, every thing that really moved the needle and catapulted me was community service. Really? That was always the thing. My big break was a woman at the New York Times named Ruth LaFerla. And she had heard about me because I had a program called How to Be Derek Fabulous, <laughs> which means, hold on, which means love, teach, inspire, and have fun. And don't dress badly. No, that's but not part of it. none of those are acronyms <laughs> but, fabulous, but, so I don't understand. But, but, that's no, not no, an acronym. No, but hold. Oh, bro, you and your acronym. So, so the reason I did this program was because I wanted to help women in need get clothes, to feel good about themselves, feel beautiful from the inside out, to go back into the workforce. And he's still doing it. I know, I was I, gonna I say, any oh, me, God's got me. I'm trying oh, to get her back God, into the workforce. I know, exactly. You just arrived. I'm always like, Anne Hayes, your skirts are not. Okay, oh sit, down. Feel sit down, sit down. And put her no. skirt that Derek gave her over her oh, dress. Yes, yes. Like to try it Nobody will see it. I know, exactly. I am still trying to help women go back to work. And I keep telling you, your skirts are not short enough. It's Hollywood, anyway. Exactly. So no, no. So so this program, and I was just at the time, you know, I was a stylist, but I wasn't in the public eye whatsoever. And that day she came and she told a very real story. All of you can actually uh, read about it in the New York Times. You can just Google it. And the story was so real. And it was funny because everyone thought when it came out, they were like, oh, it's very real instead of being fluffy. Right. And I was like, I want the real because it's women fighting with me about what they're going to wear. Wow. And I was like, and I wanted it that way. And I was honored that it was that way because I want people to know 
that just because the world is not smiling on you today doesn't mean you can't have spirit. And these women had, <laughs> these women had such spirit and that they were like, no, I don't do that. And I was like, okay, Girl. no, we're good, good. Because in those situations, when you're, when you're someone in distress, and many are, many are abused, living, still living in abuse situations, and for them to have that kind of spirit to know who they were, to know who they want to be, and to get back out there, I couldn't, I couldn't feel more honored to be there to assist. Well, you're, it was you're cute as hell for understanding how many women, but and you have helped so many people and it's absolutely amazing. Yes. But one absolutely. of the things that I want to share with our yeah. audience is Derek Fabulous does not happen without a commitment. Derek Fabulous, if you <laughs> I'm a, I'm a look at him, this is yes. a life commitment to show for those feeling, listening and not thinking. watching he's wearing a yellow denim yeah yellow jump. denim um, like, I mean, this actually, is the opposite um, of a that, marine well, that super stud that super yeah. stud gleb i think gleb it's a versace Chenko shirt wore, maybe he got it on oh, santa i'm not and sure mr warburton magazine oh, no. oh okay no okay. no it's now we've been, we have some jewels and we have some things everybody can see it on youtube but i want to ask you there yes. we there is a new position that you are taking in and, and and it is again a celebration of who you are and what you give to the world what is next for you wow okay a lot um i just took the position as editor-in-chief of british thoughts magazine which is based in london which is great uh such a blessing and funny enough uh like la palm magazine that i did before and was a partner in an, an investor and creative director everything uh this magazine i was part of before it even happened too Oh, no Which kidding. was really amazing. Incredible. And the photographer, a fashion photographer, started this magazine, as many are now, because you you need a platform. Yes. And, yes. And, and also, as you know this, we all know this, working for yourself, building your own platforms, gives you freedom to express yourself. And that's yes. what the blessing of life is. Well, you know? and the foundation being when you give, you get. When you give, Exa one of the, exactly. one of them, if I'm exactly. taking your story, you give and you give. Exactly. And well, that, that's what you receive back. Not right. only because it's our gl glory, not only yes. because it's our intent yes. and our purpose to share and live in love yes. and kindness. Um, uh, what we are on a show called Better Together with Anne and Heather, and we do like to ask, is there a person in your life who has helped inspire you to be better, to take that different step, to do that thing that 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 encourages you to stay on your path as Heather is to me? There's so many, to be frank. Well, let's you start know, with like, one. If I have a problem, I call you. <laughs> when when I think artistically and do all types of interesting things, I call you. I've got Robin who made an appearance. I've got girl Robin. I have so many friends yeah. around the world. I had a call yesterday with a dear girlfriend that I will always honor, who is the partner of the, the actually the consort, the Maharaja Kapartala. But I knew her when she lived in Boston. Only that. And, what? What? And no, I don't even understand oh, that. The Maharaja. So no, no, no. So it's a very dear girlfriend, like, and she. <laughs> And she's written all these fabulous books and and she is working on bringing me to India next year on an entire tour, um, like an oh, art tour. Oh, I know you're like, we're available. But my point is, my point is I have been beyond blessed because I have so many better togethers no, and, and it's just great. my atmosphere and who I keep around me exactly. and the love that I have. And I don't, I, I have a very specific mindset on friendship. And it, it's kind of like how I think about everything in life. You know, we all have a story to tell. We're storytellers, right? Which is really, I mean, this podcast yeah. is a fabulous tale of your lives and what you're doing yeah. now and, and your relationship in the world, right? Yes. And so for me, you know, I think of friendship as a story. And I have had so many beautiful stories with so many people. And sometimes they're short stories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're medium stories. No, just, and sometimes Heather. they're lifelong, yeah. beautiful yeah. stories. And I honor every story I get to tell. Uh, and I'm better from every single person that I have a beautiful story with. You know, we don't connect oh, with yeah. everyone. Yes. We're we're too unique oftentimes for some people, but that's what makes us even better. 
No, but well, that's what but makes us better. And, about- and that what makes us better together <laughs> is that finding that person that you connect with that honors how special we are as people. And that's really phenomenal. And you know, and that, that goes around the world. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're very famous, you're not famous at all. You could be the doorman in a building and you have a connection. And I love that. And I, I think that's what's so honorable about life. That's why I always say, you know, my big joke is that, you know, you have to be nice to every single person because you never know when you're going to get hit by your car or the house <laughs> is going to burn down. And then they're there to help you. Like, but that puts us yeah. in the human condition, doesn't it? It puts us on an even playing field. And, and I think that is the beauty of humanity and what's so special about living in the world. You know, well, I, I love your depth. Think- but where are you going? Because I'm going to superficial next. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm going to quickly say that I think that that I think that- I need a Peter Pizzoli break after oh, that. Go oh, 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 cheers! On. I think that one of the things that you know, having you on here today, like such a big part of our show and what we do. Oh, look, Robin's bringing us more champagne. Oh my more gosh. Oh. You know, uh, he, he isn't paid for this. And, oh <laughs> my God. This no, he's and his nickname is Kramer because he's we, like the gay we, Kramer we can, from, from Seinfeld. Here, right? feel and like so we call him Kramer. Kind of like arm <laughs> extension. He's a little bit robotic and he does beauty and aesthetics. And I know. <laughs> yes, I know. Exactly. So exactly. But, okay, it's after five. five by the way, and we're really proud of him for the state board getting through beauty beauty school in yes. the middle of a pandemic. He was not and a beauty bettering, school and, and, and bettering his life. Bettering his life during a time so where you, so many I'm, were in I'm, distress. I'm, and yes. this is a perfect I segue into what up. I was actually going to say God. because yes. I met you straight out of COVID. It was, I mean, COVID wasn't, we thought COVID. No, darling, it was not straight out of no, COVID. We not. went back we in, were, remember? We were in the middle of COVID. No, I know. Because we had Christmas I know, together, which I just you were like the first person that it was the first time that I did something out of COVID. Like it was the first oh. work thing. Oh. It was the first in-person oh, wow, thing. Oh, when wow. we look back, we and it were- it changed your life. We were in the middle of COVID and <laughs> yes. yours. Yes, <laughs> yes. For but sure that, that's what I want to say is that the impact our friendships have had on all of our lives, our friendship, Robin included, he, I mean, the, the, the the Ryan too, like we started this podcast yes. in, co, you know, yes. kind of around yes, the same did. time wow. Wow. and, yes. and just the paths that we've gone on and the things that we've done in our lives since then. And like not having you in my life now, I just don't even know what it, what it would be. I know, it and I don't so bring on new people. Well, my friends are friends for like 30 years. I and know. so to now to have you and Robin, in in my love and in my life, I feel so incredibly grateful, oh, and um, so. and I'm just uh, that's it, full stop. I love it. It's a full sentimental moment, but I have to do a, a shameless plug. I have a movie coming out, and I am on the cover of Derek's magazine. Yes, yes. Okay. let's talk about. So, that. so I want to do a shameless, well, well, not uh, so shameless, well, please. Let, I'm, here. Goes, I'm here for a reason. <laughs> I am on the cover of a magazine with my one of my dearest colleagues. And Derek, I will let you um, announce this because of uh, 13 minutes coming out on Friday. So yes, so I'm, the day I'm after thrilled we'll that in uh, c- correlation with 13 minutes, my brand new magazine called Gurus is coming out this Friday and the covers are launching, Peter not just coming out, yes, no, it's launching, a full, it's a full launch. brand new magazine uh, with Miss Anne Heche and our dear friend, Peter Facinelli. Peter Facinelli. And it's who such an honor. not only directed me in, yes. in The Vanished, Peter Facinelli and I now have a beautiful history. Thank yes. you to Peter Facinelli for introducing me to you. But um, Peter Facinelli yeah, I are in a movie called 13 I Minutes this Peter week. Too. And um, in, what? I owe a lot to Peter too, because I, well, without I him, and too. I say that every time we, we, owe, we see owe him, Peter Facinelli. he says, I just get such joy in seeing you guys with Derek. Oh. You know, because, because I'm sure he sees it every jealous. five minutes. No, he is. does. And he's like, <laughs> what about me? No, 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 no. The well, thing, we the the thing that, together. Yes. And that's so amazing. And the movie is so incredible. And in the, I mean, I Heather sent me, everybody who listens to this podcast knows that I do not look at my own press. Heather sent me some press of 13 minutes. By the way, yesterday. for our listeners, 
we t we gave you the heads up that you were going to see Ann H in the press saying that she was patient zero in the cancel culture, and it's everywhere. So and I hope that it, you guys see well, it. Because this is Heather's feel, idea. She is my PR person. And, and, She's the one who told and me. And feel you said like it's you were kind fault. of smart in the know, uh, right? Well, I mean, it, it, anyway. It is, it, but, but so no, I'm, two I'm, big I'm, things I'm, that we're asking our our tribe to do yes. is to go check out <laughs> gurus. Yes, yes, magazine. Go so it's gurus. gurusmagazine.com. And you're going to find so many interesting stories uh, besides, uh, of, of course, and, and Peter's story, because uh, it's a much different platform for me because I wanted to do something that was more wellness based. And I bet more, Dr. E is going to be a guru. Yes, yes, of course, Dr. Dr. Well, e. Dr. E. Derek, Jason, Derek Jason, brought Jason, us Dr. Jason, Dr. E. And yes, I did bring you Dr. E. Dr. E is a client yes, of mine, and I'm yeah. so proud of her, and the yeah. new book is I mean, performing been, well. That been, we've and talked a lot about red zone and green zones on the Of course, the of course. So it's we really want wonderful. people to go to gurus. Yes, we need them we to go to gurus. we also have a very unique moment where people are able to go to the theaters and see movies again. Yes. So for me, this is my, you know my disaster movie that has been released after Volcano. It's a very special story that I tell in the movie. And Peter is kick ass he is so so amazing the character that he's he created i think actor. is the best he's for me as much as he transformed but trace atkins isn't the facts of the movie is it's a it's a it's a huge disaster film and the fact that we can see it in theaters now is a big deal so it on friday i really, it's a really would i would like love it if everybody all of our tribe would take a picture the of and them take a picture of at the, the, the marquee we'll put it on our instagram we'll put it on the instagram there we go and we'll put it on our website absolutely if you go to 13 minutes this week we don't really have a website we're not really well, we on our website. Com. <laughs> yeah I mean, we'll, you know yeah. or my instagram yeah, Heather, you're in charge of that stuff. Yeah, That's we'll, why I'm we'll put it on the Instagram. I know. Uh, the, the, uh, so, the beautiful, so. the beautiful notes I've been getting from you all week were really dear. Thank you so I much. Met, I missed you. I think that's what I said. I missed no, you. Where the hell are you? I was you? joking. He's I was like, it's not you. Oh, 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 from Heather. No, yes. no, no, no. Oh, I, know. I was it, like, wow, look at all this. Love. Look at all this and love. Oh, Listen, wait, there's a lot it. of there's a, there's a lot. No, no, I'm just there's a lot of celebration going on this week, and we are so grateful. Jerry uh, to be with us and I think our I think we're going to give our better shout out to Peter Facinelli right now. And oh, so good good you. better. Wait, good wait, better. wait, we can't good let better. you go because you really are our style expert. Yes. Give us can you give us some fall What should we tips? wear to fashion what week? Should next we, week? What should we what should like give us something. Right, what, so, if you so could only quickie, buy a few some staples. Some quickie hits, a quickie hits. Uh that you can actually I'm going to give you quick hits that you can buy affordably. Uh, we love that. affordably. Oh, good, 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 yes, good, 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 so good. affordable things. Uh, puffy coats, Ooh. and puffy vests. Oh. Uniglow has a lot of good nice. stuff. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I sent you there, dear. Yeah. Yes, yes. So no, Uniglow, I sent you there. Actually, maybe that's fine. I know, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm taking credit. Sorry, you're done. You there. You're done. Okay, you're done. Girls. No, 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 no. All right, girls. Uh, so uh, the puffy coat is a huge trend. Uh, mixing prints, oh, like like you're doing right now. I can't garlic. do that. I've shown this outfit all no, 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 no. But, but here's outfit. the trick to you, mixing you prints. You can do that well. Then you go and you buy dresses. Zara actually has a fabulous mixed print dress right now that's okay. under a hundred dollars. It's oh. phenomenal and really beautiful. I just used it on a bunch of TV shows last week. And then uh, black then and I won't white. I be buying it. Color block. Color block's a color huge block. trend. Uh -huh. And talk about easy because it's color block, super yeah. simple. I wonder why. Uh, well, what is oh, I know. I love block. a color block. I love a color Nobody block. Nobody knows moment. what color block means. It means what Derek yeah, is wearing. So, so the maybe pants you're wearing, you could be wearing a white dress with a black jacket with a red hat or whatnot. Or you could just be wearing uh -huh. black or white. That's a color block. It's, it's, or so it's whatever color. Colors. It's just mixing colors, but, and, but all in blocks. Got you. Right? Got it. And that's a huge trend that's really great. And then cozy comfy, which I Always talked a, a lot about of. on television because that's a no brainer. And you know, buying like chenille things like, you know, Skims has the most amazing collection. They actually just put out a Fendi collection, which that. is so fun. I know she looks fabulous, uh, Kim. But also they have very affordable things that you can buy. Then they're just cozy comfy, but you mix it with something like, maybe you wear a big sweater with like a lace skirt, like really fun and you're mixing. And also mix mixing texture. So you're mixing texture of fabric. It's not only color. Yes. You're you're going with you're 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 gonna put some. Right, you're but gonna if put you're an not old, good you're gonna at, put a, you're gonna put a college sweatshirt 
with a beautiful skirt. You're, yes, you're oh, funny enough, varsity is a huge trend. Well, varsity I wear my Nordstrom's yeah. rack sweater yeah. that I can't take off so, with, right. with those shiny pants yesterday. And you look cute as exactly. hell. Exactly. I think yeah. my daughter is saying, I shoes. think I can speak for Heather and Ryan and all of us here today on Better Together with Anna and Heather. Would you like to be our style expert? Well, he already is. And oh, yeah. come <laughs> on and talk to us just a little bit. Maybe we just have a little bit of dalliance in the once a month kind of drop in with what is hot now. Would you be willing sure. to do that for us? Fantastic. Sure. Well, I, if, if I'm drinking and I don't have to talk about Peter Pizzoli, Peter I did Pizzoli! that on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay. Cheers. Done. Right. Cheers. <laughs> Derek, it could not have been more fabulous to have you on our show. Mm. We love you. We love Robin, our special guest over here. If Ryan, you're following course, in the Peter Pizzoli you. drinking game, Stop please it. please don't drink and drive. Oh my God, please don't, <laughs> don't drink, drink and drive. And, and don't take pills either. This is not Valley of the Dolls. And don't you text. Can say this with me. I think, and Derek, until next time, everybody, live in loving kindness. <laughs> and don't, don't be, be a dick. dick. And a big thanks to our Better Together team, Ryan Tillotson, Sebastian Alcala, Daniel Ferreira, and of course, Anne and Heather. If you haven't already, please subscribe on whatever device or platform you're listening to this on. And as always, see you next week. We're better.